So I'm assuming you have great articles to give to Janine and Colleen. I do? Of course you do. What are you talking about? Well, because Janine's doing the newsletter. Uh-huh. So I'm sure you're sending her a picture. If you oh, ready. I thought you were speaking something specific. Oh, no. Oh, okay. You're awesome. Um, Class. Actually, I'll have, I'll have kids doing the Warbirds, um, volunteering at the Warbirds this Saturday. So I'll get some pictures up there. Ooh, yeah. Where are those t-shirts at? Don't even. <laughs> Oh, but I got an email that said they were being shipped this week. That's I got the same email you did. Okay. I got my t-shirt. Sign me up for that uh, conference. Yes, I got your name for that. Don, uh, do you think you want to go to that NTAS conference? I don't think so. Okay. If the timing's not right. I'm going to try to do the drone thing at uh, spring break, though. On yeah. The, yeah, I already told Josh I was going to try to be there for that. Cool. Joe, are you available for that one? The one in New Orleans? Yeah, yeah I, told, I told Josh I'd be there for that one. I yeah. wish. Maybe. Did you ask Colleen? Did you talk to Colleen about the one in New Orleans? <clears throat> I can't go to New Orleans, but I am going to go to the Inspire training. Yeah, ditto. Cool. I haven't gotten any confirmation back from Josh of how many people said yes yet. Okay. So as I understand that, we pay attention for a couple of days and he's going to give us a $3,000 drone. That's how I, I understand it. I mean, that is, not, I'm not going to ask. That's cool. They have them sitting there waiting for us, but. How many? You haven't taken one home to play with it? Yeah, that's what the training um, that Josh sent out. Um, it's, yeah, it's three days. I think it's one and a half days or so of actual, like, this is it, this is some info on it, safety rundown, and then it's about a day to a day and a half of actually working with it and making sure that you're proficient. And um, the way I understand it is that real flight, the octocopter, is the best one to kind of get your muscle memory going. And then you have, like, a final exam kind of. And as long as you could go through this obstacle course, then you get a drone. You know, I went on the website for that company. That's an incredible machine. That is really cool. It is. It's awesome with the high def, too. I was looking at, I forget whose footage, but it is awesome. It doesn't even look like this thing is moving. It still looks like it's from the movies with the high def and how you can like zoom in and out and do the panoramic views. It looks really cool. So here comes the music video. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. And so I'm assuming both of you got your rosters in. Yep, we're good. Good job. Yeah, rosters. Yeah. I thought that Terry just wanted like a list of the students. So here I am like literally typing out my students names and hitting send and she does not want that. She wanted the legit PDF for, so I fixed my mistake. Are we supposed to print that off of someplace or? Or I sent her just the, the PDF of it with my two different schools. Okay. Cause the only email I got from her was saying these, these are your students. So do I just need to tell her that those are correct? And reminding us that the drop dead date was coming up. Right. The something is on the eleventh. Something is tomorrow. That is the due. end of registration. Mm -hmm. And that's when your rosters are due to Terry. Okay. So well, that's in addition, if we have already got them basically filled in the Emory Riddle rosters? Even though she has, she can see who's enrolled, but she wanted the roster for the high school. Okay. 
from everybody or just we talk in 120 and 121? For the new courses from this semester. Okay. I'll check with the other instructors. Yeah, I thought she just wanted the names. So I was typing it out and she's like, no, I want the official roster. So it's easy if you have access to the online grade sheets. Of course, I didn't have it to my Atlantic school, so a little bit of a runaround, but it was pretty crazy. Um, and let's see. So we're supposed to be getting our t-shirts. And yes. Yeah, yeah. I got mine already. You got yours? Yep. How are they? We haven't taken them out of the box yet. We're about, we're probably about 10 or 15 short to be able to give them to everybody, but uh, mm -hmm. so we're gonna start with the new students because students in the past probably already got one. So we're gonna start with all the new students and um, see what we've got left. Because I'm in a bit of a dilemma because I have all the sizes from last semester students and I have about 50% new students and the 50% that gave me the sizes are no longer there. So I'm kind of debating on should I tell the old students that they're there or should I just be like, how many? register this year when I give them to them. Say that one again? If they're not registered with us now, we're not gonna give them to them. That's a good. Had several washouts, we're not gonna give them to them. Mm. Yeah, I'm the same. If they left me, I'm not going to give them a shirt. We might sell them to raise funds for the drone club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm how are you coming on a competition? For, I'm trying to find money for that competition team. We may end up having to go as far away as, as Georgia. I think Hillary's going to sponsor a uh, drone competition at Embry-Riddle. It's going to be awesome. I think they're looking into that for next year. Um, the UAS for STEM competition is pretty much already set up. It's got a, it's got all the curriculum written. It's a fantastic program. I'm just, I'm disappointed we were the only Florida school that signed up. But wouldn't it be cool if all the AS220 courses around the state, yep. even bringing one team of four, Showed up with Embry Riddle and had a little competition in in house. Colleen and I talked about them using UAS for STEM next year and trying to get every one of the programs in it. But you know, it's it's two grand a team. That's the that's the whole bag. So maybe maybe Colleen ought to host one that wouldn't be two grand a team. Yeah, there's certainly some choices out there. But the the beauty of this is that it's got the uh, you know, the curriculum's already written for you. There's an online safety course they have to take. Um, where it, there's, it's a ground school. It's more than a safety course. It's a full-up ground school. It starts from, you know, basic aerodynamics all the way out to uh, uh, airspace and, and the drone control itself. So then they give you this thing called a Quadzilla, and you build it yourself and learn how to use the software yourself and then go to a regional competition. That's the part we haven't quite figured out how to do yet so it looks like I'm gonna be raising trying to raise enough money to take eight kids on a uh, at least an overnight trip if not two overnights to Georgia Wow where in Georgia don't know yet they've so far the only one they there they know that they've set up for a regional competition is in Maryland but I'm, I'm expecting there's gonna be one closer than that but, but we are the Probably the, the southernmost team. <laughs> Little Key West reference there. <laughs> well, then you could, we'll see how the t shirt thing goes. I'm not sure. Maybe towards a club or something like that. And then if you're going to be there for the inspired training, at least you'll drum up some more maybe sponsorships or. I'm looking for sponsorships down here, hoping to get somebody down here that wants to support our support our team. But we'll see what happens. Well, we'll see what we can do. The year's not over, Joe. 
Um, let's see. How is everyone doing with 121 and 220? I just, uh, I just actually today was a pretty eventful day for me as far as 121 goes. Um, the average score on one period's session four test was a 68 and on a session on the section four test for another period, the average score was a 71. So I've told them that we're, uh, we're taking another week. I'm going to retest them and average the two test scores together and see what happens. But uh, we're basically going all over it again. And I'm, I'm pretty much dressing them, dressing them down pretty hard about uh, not doing their homework, not doing all the practice exercises and basically told them I'm not going to take a C average as a, as a result. Yeah, because that's a failing grade. You know, we don't we don't do D's and F's, or well, we do F's, but we don't do D's. Did you do just um, like the performance in cross country, or have you been making it cumulative? I'm following it exactly the way the 121 says to do it. I mean, the way 141 says to do it. I'm doing the exact same modules, same slides, same tests. Um, so I'm doing it exactly. I mean, if the FAA walked in tomorrow, as far as I'm concerned, they couldn't tell I wasn't doing this at Daytona Beach. That's the way I was told to deliver it. Yeah. But the only difference that I'm doing is I'm making it more cumulative. So I'm bringing, you know, all of it from the beginning through the rest of it. So they'll have like a question on stability or a question on weather or something like that. But... Well, I'm using the exact same tests, although I did change like the airports and the pressure altitudes and the, the details of the questions, but I use the exact same questions that they, I thought we basically had to, because that's the one, that's what the FAA signed off on. So I'm using the exact the same tests. Like the, the core material is the same in terms of what we're teaching. So we're, we have similar PowerPoints all I'm doing is adding to it. As long as I'm not, you know, taking away from it, then we're good. So I do the slides as they're delivered, and, and to be absolutely honest, I take that first slide where it talks about how long you're gonna talk about each subject. I move that to the end. Other than that, I use the exact same slides. Um, and then I do two days. I do the slides one day, and then if we finish them, fine. If we don't finish them, yeah, I think you saw my schedule. Every other day is an FAA day. And yeah. the days that aren't an FAA day, we practice the slides or do something else. But on the on the quote unquote FAA days, if the FAA walks in, I don't think they should be able to tell the difference in my classroom and what's going on at Daytona Beach. Exact same thing. Cool. I use the exact same test. Like I said, I changed some of the details on this one, but other than that, it's the exact same test that I put off canvas. Yeah, I, to be honest, I throw some more Glime stuff at them uh, as soon as possible so they don't only see what's for homework as their Glimes. So I throw those in as maybe extra quizzes or put those as more of a cumulative so now they're seeing more and more of the same questions versus same. Well, they've got to do their Glime homework and turn it in. So, you know, there's... there's there are module days that have the requirements for the glimes to turn in, and that's when they got to have them turned in. So they're getting them all along. Now, except for this week that I'm pushing everything back right now, we were going to be done with the FAA modules by uh, spring break. Mm -hmm. And I was really going to ride the glime hard from there in. Um, now it's going to be spring break plus a week. And then the main reason I wanted to sort of wrap it up that soon is that then we get into that all that testing. So basically I'm going to open up the computer lab. They're going to go into testing. It's going to be, you know, sit down, work on your glime, give me the results. So I'm just going to give them different chapters and that's what they're going to be doing is working on that. Of course, this is also the time they're finally going to get to start flying the simulators. I've been holding that over their heads for quite a while. So they get to fly some of them if they're caught up on all their homework. If they're not caught up on their homework. They're not flying. Um, plus, they just finished their cross-country planning, so I'm ready for them to start getting to fly the simulator. And do, I've been making them fly traffic patterns, just like they were in a flight school. So, 
So now they're now they're ready to start doing some cross country flights and learning how to navigate and stuff the best they can on those simulators. But um, that's uh, I'm trying to trying to treat it just like a, a flight school anywhere else. So they've been doing traffic patterns, learning takeoffs and landings. You know, doing doing it just like they were taking it from a CFI and a flight school somewhere. Which, by the way, our new instructor is a CFI. Oh, good. So, might get some help there. Yeah. What I usually do is, I know that we start at uh, similar times, and we'll end, if I follow through, we end at about the same time, too, with the spring break. But I end up almost stretching it out slightly. So, every, maybe every other day is an FAA day, but then I throw it, like, in every third day. Um, so that we have a Glime day already booked into it, and then we have a, a Sim day pretty much every other week. So we do like a Glime day in one week, and then we do a Sim day in one week. Sometimes it works really well, and the students get to tie everything together. Like for the beginning, it was really helpful with the instruments for um, some of the illusions. It was actually kind of helpful with like nighttime, uh, we didn't really finish the flight physiology stuff yet because that's the last part, but but we've already talked about a lot of it. Uh, so we'd stretch it out a little bit in my class. Um, I'll let you know if that works any better because last year I did it exactly the way you're doing it where we ended about a month or two early and we ended up doing like glime for that month or two. And the students, by the end, were just so worn out. So I didn't have any students pass my in-house, at least an 80. We'll see. So, yeah, they, they didn't that. have any luck with it last year. My understanding is he offered the students $100 for any of them that took it and passed, and none of them took him up on it. But uh, I don't plan on doing that. But, yeah, I'm also, you know, it's – they don't get to play in the simulators. They don't get to do the fun stuff if they're not caught up on their homework. And they seem to prefer to use the non-FAA days to do their homework. Good. So that's how they're spending it. That's how they're doing it. You know, the simulator's sitting there. They can, they, they, they're caught up. I have check marks by all their homework. They can fly it. Otherwise, it sits there. Yeah, and that's definitely where you can put in that, like, other section of their grade, which I'm sure they – will need by the end. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, that all sounds really good to me. I mean, we're not doing necessarily the exact same thing, but we're still getting all of the MCOs ac across. We're still having the same material. We're still really giving out the same test. So and in 220 right now, I'm trying to get them through the uh, USI. Uh, I'm into my the eighth day of that and I barely got the the person that's done the most is has finished the session three quiz the person that's done the least just finished the session one quiz today and most people are on session two and I, it's just taken a lot longer to get through this than I thought it was going to but I'm not going to give up I'm just going to keep keep pushing them to try to you know they don't seem to want to do anything at home so I get them in the computer lab. They, they seem to want to work on it during, during class time. And that's what we're doing right now is basically every day I can, I'm taking them to the computer lab, logging them on, and they're sitting there doing it on their own. Hmm. And you're already in the eighth day in the lab? Yeah, we're on our eighth day since I started doing the USI cert course. I started it last Monday. Granted, last Monday was trying to get everybody logged on. It was, it was Tuesday by the time we got everybody, you know, up and running, although I still had one kid that couldn't seem to figure out how to log on as late as recently as Friday. But they're, they're going into computer labs, sitting down, logging on, watching the slides, doing the homework, doing the tests, and that's what we're doing in 220 right now. So I've stepped away from the textbook. Well, module. For, oh, do you, you don't have the workbooks yet? Yeah, we got the workbooks there. Okay. there. They're going at it. So what module for the USI, you know, AS220 part are you on? I went through the first test, 
and then pick this up and have them start working on this. Because I'm also doing it similar to how I'm doing AS121 where I'm integrating it a little bit more. So all of my students are done with module two. On the, on the, out of the textbook or out of slides in the textbook? We are two thirds of the way through module two in the actual slide presentations and they're all done with USI through module two. We did the first test and then went right straight into USI and that's what we're concentrating on right now. My, my really main reason for doing that is because it's such a computer intense thing and starting April, they're gonna be in testing. I won't be able to get the computer labs. So I looked at the opportunity and said, I can get the computer labs right now. So we're doing the USI cert now because that's when I can get into the computer labs. Once they start all that FSA testing stuff, I won't be able to get into the computer labs anymore. Yeah. So I've got them right now concentrating on getting through the uh, USI cert course. Are they having a difficult time with anything or it's just taking a long time? Just not going as fast as I would go. <laughs> yeah. And and I've got one or two that are that are sort of leading the way and I got one or two that are you know, I got one kid that didn't even get logged on the first time till Friday. He really aggravated the heck out of me. He just and had this excuse, that excuse, whatever. His mom's email wouldn't work. Uh, tried to get him to send his credentials. I find, But anyway, we finally got him logged on Friday. So he's my tail end Charlie, and he's way behind. But you know, I'm still trying. I'm hoping that no more than, than two weeks from the end of this week, I've got them all tested and certified. And then, um, I'm not sure if you were to, I'll go back to the textbook then. Textbook and slides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then I make sure that I can see them all in USI and I know when they've completed it and what score they got and everything, but I make sure that their proof is actually writing all of the quiz questions down along with the right answer. That is their proof that they've done it because those are very similar to the test. I'm in the lab with them. I'm watching them. Yeah. I, take oh, I make them go extra because they're allowed to use the workbook for the final, you know, for that, that final test. And, yeah, so I've, and I've got to write some of the stuff down too. Okay. Yeah. That's what I make sure. That's your suggestion when you're done. Because they don't even know the right answer. Half the time they're just like, I completed the quiz and I passed it, but they don't know what was the right one and what wasn't. So those questions are going to be seen again, undoubtedly. And then, okay, that's where I'm at. I got to get ready for my uh, college here in a couple minutes, so okay. I need to wrap up. You don't mind? Yeah, no worries. And then just make sure that if any of those students don't pass, that they'll have 30 days to then retake it. After. Okay. I'm not gonna oh. tell them. That. Yeah. Well, anyway. Sorry. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Hillary, I got a question on the 220 certification test. Do they, for the certification test, which they've got to receive an 80 on the course to take that, do they also use their workbook on that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, which is why I'm like, write this down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And they, there's a bank of, at least last time I checked, somewhere around 200 questions. The final is 75 questions or I'm calling it a final, but that's the industry cert. After the eight modules on the USI, there is this like 10 question final, but that's not the final final. That's not the industry cert. Does that make sense? Yeah, the industry cert is a monitored uh, test that comes after they've completed all the modules. And Okay. And so they have to receive at least an 80 on the course itself in order to sit for the certification right okay that's like almost your endorsement without you having to endorse them gotcha okay yeah I had last semester I had pretty much those people those students that actually finished the course I signed them off I had 25 or so students and 12 of them finished it because I made it as a homework assignment and those averages were about 75 or 80. So I wasn't worried about them taking the final, the, the industry cert, but um, four out of the 12 didn't pass. So this Friday they're retaking.
Okay. And so um, we haven't been in class for the past 30 days, so I'm a little weary, but I mean, they should, hopefully, fingers crossed, you know? But the likelihood of them all passing anyway was kind of a, a long shot. So me having, what, eight out of 12 actually pass, I'm, I'm calling that a pretty successful uh, venture. Probably pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as 121, I, you know, I noticed similar things. I'll, I'll be finished early, and I've already identified areas where I'm just going to go back and teach that same module over again, kind of like the weather analysis. Mm -hmm. I know they're struggling with it, so we'll go over and redo it. And then it's just going to be test, test, test until they're ready to go take it. Yeah. That's, I didn't reteach anything last year. I just, I did Kahoot. I did the clickers. I did the Glimes. I did paper copy. I did electronic copy. I tried to make it kind of interesting. And after a while, you're like, okay, it's Glime. Memorize the answers. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. It, my students, I had one that was pretty close with, or actually I have two that were pretty close with the 76 on the test day. But, and I mean, Warren, who is in St. Augustine, he's been teaching this for three, four, or five years, and I think he's had like two or three out of these four or five. It's, it's, a, hard, it's a hard test. You yeah. have so many options, so it is what it is. But I also know, um, who was it? The students that actually fly during the course, they pass it more likely. You know, I mean, if you just look at the statistics, those people that uh, out in, where is it? With Alan Davis, they fly outside of campus and he's got like an 80 or 90% pass rate. Like his, you know, it depends what school you're in. It depends. It depends yeah. all. Yeah. But. That's my case. Um, does anyone else have any questions or concerns with either 121 or no one's teaching 120 in this group or uh, 220? And then either of, yeah, exactly. And then uh, either Guy or whoever, who's Cooler Master? Someone who doesn't want to say who they are. That's okay. Um, if either of you guys wanted to do the NTAS or if you were planning on Sun and Fun, and just let me know how many students. Oh, hi, Jason. Thanks. Um, if either of you wanted to do those things, then you can either tell me now or you can send me a message uh, via email or text or whatever is easier. Got it, no mic. Got it, that makes more sense. So that's, that's all I have. Luckily, nothing too bothersome. Just wanted to chat, make sure everybody was good on the same page. You're muted. Did I mute you or you mute you? For the conference in Daytona Beach, are you going to register us or is there some registration form I need to fill out? No, at least there's nothing that you need to fill out as I know. I'll send, it's you, me, and like four or five other teachers, professors, whatever, that were interested. So right after this, I'm going to send Colleen the list, and I'll ask her what the next step is. I don't think we have to do anything. Debbie Triplett will probably have all the hotel information and be like, see you then, kind of thing. Perfect. That's what it seems like to me. Um, it should be interesting. I'm, de I'm kind of intrigued at some of the speakers, and then I know that some of the speakers might not be so good, but we'll see. You know, that's how it conference is. <laughs> All righty. No worries. You're good. You're good. We still hear you. All right, that's all I got. As long as you don't have anything, we're good to go. See you next time. Bye, yep, see you next week.